This Japanese clock from the 70s is one of the coolest I've ever seen in my life, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, it looks amazing. Those flip numbers, round display shape look really unusual and make you love it from the first view. Second, it feels and sounds really good. When I rotate the knob to set the time or another one to set the alarm, I not only feel slight mechanical resistance, which feels extremely satisfying, but also hear it. However, despite being almost perfect, this clock has one problem. After 55 years of being alive, for some reason it just got tired and stopped working. So I will try to do my best to give it a second life, while showing you how it works. And trust me, it's quite interesting, because it has no electronics inside. So let's look inside of it. Usually while disassembling stuff I try to be as gentle as I can, but like with everything in this life, some things work themselves out, but sometimes things need a nice hard push. Meaning that if you can't open something, and there are no hidden screws you see, just pull harder. At least one part should come out. In my case not one, but two. They are used to set the time and alarm. I will call them knobs. And finally, we need them two hidden screws. There are always hidden screws. And we can finally open it by splitting two main parts. On one side we can see some cable fixator. This tiny plastic piece holds the wire and prevents the user from pulling the cable out of the clock. Quite a necessary piece in any electronics device. And finally we have the main clock part, with all the gears, numbers displays and its secrets. And at the beginning it wasn't even clear how it works, because modern clocks are mostly quartz based and have some integrated circuits inside to control the clock. But this one is powered directly by mains voltage. How? Actually, the way this clock works is quite simple, yet interesting. It is set in motion by the motor, which through a set of gears rotates the seconds disk. On one side of the disk there is a pin, which once per 60 seconds rotates an auxiliary gear, which then spins the minus disk. And like that, one disk after another, gear by gear, time is counted and displayed right up to hours in a 12 hour format. The time on the clock is set up quite easily, by simply rotating the outer knob, which makes the minutes disk rotate and numbers change. So it is really nice work engineers made designing it in the 1970s. But as I said, this particular one which I bought on eBay has one problem. It does not work. Luckily for me, it was an extremely easy fix. The reason it wasn't working is dirt. The hole in the metal plate designed for the rotor was just full of grease, so after cleaning it a little, the motor started working again. Yeah, sometimes cleaning is all mechanisms need. And it is quite a cool aspect of this clock. There is nothing inside that can actually break. The motor is extremely simple, quite heavy and reliable. Such a motor actually used in a lot of modern clocks and is called lavette type stepping motor. The rotor of the motor is a permanent magnet and is able to turn only in one direction when alternating voltage is applied to the winding. This one. So basically I see voltage applied from the wall plug directly to this coil turns the stator into an electromagnet, the polarity of which changes 50 times per second. So the change in magnetic field rotates the magnetic rotor. Then with some reduction gears inside the case, which unfortunately I cannot open, the necessary RPM of this top gear is achieved, which then spins all other gears in the clock. So as I said, no electronics inside, just some physics, electromagnet and a coil. Which from one side is kinda nice, nothing can break. But from the other side it has a huge drawback. It's not as accurate as quartz clock, because frequency of the grid is floating all the time. In a narrow range, but still floating affecting the rotor RPM. And over time even small deviations have an effect, meaning that time on the clock and real one are going to differ. From the other side this motor is not just only motor, which might be quite surprising. It serves another purpose. Japanese engineers or whoever designed this clock were quite smart, so they used the same piece of laminated electric steel to pull in and out some smaller magnet attached to a flexible arm. But why exactly? Because when it shakes, it creates an extremely annoying 50 Hz noise. And as you may have guessed, it serves as an alarm, which is set up by rotating this knob. But how exactly does this mechanism work? 
When the alarm is set up, there is a slight gap between the timer disc and this narrow gear, which stops a small mechanical lever from triggering the alarm. So when the clock works and counts minutes, this narrow gear also rotates. And when the pin on each side matches the cutout on the timer disc, it is pushed forward, no longer blocking the lever, which releases the magnet and it is time to wakey wakey, get out of bed, do breakfast and live the life. So for me it was quite interesting to see how without any electronics Sankyo company achieved full clock functionality. Sad, but they don't make clocks anymore. Being founded in 1946, they eventually merged with a bigger group and now are called Nidex Sankyo and mostly made motors, sensors and automotive stuff. I guess because it gives much more profit. Anyway, after fixing the clock there was still one problem that was bothering me a lot. The noise of the motor. Even when the clock is fully assembled, I can hear it. And it is quite annoying having some constant source of noise directly on your table. So I tried to fix it. Main word in here, tried. I thought, what is the best way to block noise from something? Cover it, I guess. Then sound waves are going to be bouncing inside the cover and eventually damped out. So I designed this 3D printed aluminum cover for the motor, because aluminum has much better thermal conductivity and would help dissipate the heat that motor creates. Hopefully it's going to be enough to not overheat it. Why does it have some cutouts in it though? Because space in the clock is limited and to fit the cover I had to make it of really weird shape and with some cutouts. And I must say it is quite nice that nowadays parts with any shape and material that you might need for any device repair can be manufactured quite easily. You don't have to have any tools at home. All you need is to draw some part in some CAD you're familiar with and order it online. For example, from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, which provides CNC machining, 3D printing, laser cutting and PCB manufacturing services. So if you have to repair some equipment, especially when it's old and it's not possible to buy a spare part, you can you can just design the part by yourself, order it from the material you need, it can be metal, plastic, in different colors, and after submitting the orders through the website, which is quite easy to do, you have your part delivered quite fast to almost any part of the world. Don't just trust my words, go and check it by yourself. Reference link for the PCB way is in the description. So I hope the cover would reduce the noise, so let's test it. And unfortunately it didn't. Because of one reason. You see, when you take something that vibrates and creates noise, and it has even slight contact with some other part, they both start vibrating, creating even more noise. So this time I tried another approach. I tried to fix the vibration from even being transferred to the clock body. So I put some rubber gaskets beneath the screws that connected the metal part with the plastic part. And this time it really helped. However, I tried pushing it even farther by putting some melamine foam between the motor and main clock case. At such moments, usually most primates have their neurons activated and they can add 2 plus 2, because with the foam I am obviously covering those cutouts, which were designed as a ventilation, to transfer the heat from operating motor outside the case. But sometimes in the pursuit of their aim, primates lose common sense and make strange decisions. So for now I will leave the foam there and see how it operates over time, leaving the overheating problem for future me. Anyway, did the foam even help to reduce the noise? It did, quite a lot actually. And finally the clock can stand on my table without irritating me, which is quite a huge success, because I really like it. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe, press the like button and check my other videos, they're extremely cool. Love you. Bye.